Have you ever wondered what it takes to save a historic mansion from the brink of destruction? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In 1800, the United States Capitol was moved from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C., bringing with it the relocation of high-ranking government officials. One such official was Joseph Norse, the first register of the Treasury, who was responsible for balancing the government's spending by canceling and transferring its debts. Not only was it a good-paying position, but Joseph had come from a wealthy, English-turned-American family. In 1804, he purchased a federal-style mansion from a foreclosure auction in Georgetown. The red brick home was stately in appearance, with a symmetrical main body flanked by mirrored service wings. The rear of the home featured two rounded towers framing a Palladian window which overlooked a perfectly manicured lawn. The interior was finished out with fine materials and decorated with distinctly American furnishings. Unfortunately, as time went on, the house found itself in the middle of a crossroads, quite literally. In 1915, Q Street was expanded, but there was only one problem. The street was planned to cut straight through the house. The now historically significant Century Home was threatened with demolition, but after much consideration, the owners would not allow for their important piece of American history to simply be bulldozed. The house had been constructed above a foundation, which meant that it could be jacked up and rolled further up the property to avoid the new road. It was carefully lifted from its foundation and slowly pulled uphill about 50 feet and set on a new foundation. The result was magnificent. The stately, federal-style mansion now overlooked the street from its perch, high up on the hill behind a brick fence almost giving it the appearance of a fortress in the middle of the nation's capital. With the new foundation being dug out, the opportunity to introduce sunken gardens with grand terraces became realized. Entering the home, we arrive in the grand stair hall, measuring 38 feet long. Its original interior was kept intact during the moving process. The library, with its freestanding bookcases and writing desk, became a time capsule of what life was like in the early 1800s. Facing the library, on the other side of the stair hall, is the blue parlor. We can imagine President James Madison's wife waiting for her husband to arrive safely just after the White House was burned by the British in 1812. The house is full of history, as many of its notable owners entertain presidents and ambassadors. It is fun to imagine the conversations that must have taken place around the dinner table as some of the country's earliest and most influential figures laid out the groundwork for the nation to expand. And of course, no home of such stature would have been complete without a music room, where live music could have softly entertained guests as they drank tea cozied up to the fireplace. In 1928, the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America purchased the mansion and named it Dumbarton House. Since then, it has remained open to the public as a house museum, where guests can appreciate and learn about the federal period of the United States. Did you have a favorite room? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.